Hi everyone, this is day 25. Uh, so what happened was, uh, it was in 1965, it was 1966 when uh, my father asked me if I could take my younger brother who just turned 16, who was 16 years old. And uh, he had just uh, passed his senior Cambridge exam and joined Aldina Vistra for his uh, A-levels first year. My sister was already there. She was doing her finals A-levels. And uh, when uh, and, uh, uh, what, what is his name? The tailor shop uh, from behind the tailor shop there was a gentleman from Pandya building as well. He, uh, his uh, sons are here in England. And uh, he was there and he asked, uh, my, my father hugged me and it started, tears came out from his eyes and he was actually in tears for of the joy that I agreed to take my younger brother. I was uh, reminded that by my youngest brother that uh, January he had joined the Aldina Vistram and February he left and he was playing with some uh, uh, senior footballers and broke his arm. It all happened between that March, I mean uh, January and May. And May first week we were leaving, I had already booked the ticket and the, this uh, Ferdinand Lips was coming from uh, uh, Mauritius, picking up passengers from Mauritius, Dar es Salaam, and on the way to Mombasa, from Mombasa, pick up, pick all of us, all of us up, and uh, travel to towards England. All the, this uh, all inclusive. The ticket was booked for all inclusive right up to London. Anyway, my father said, I'll book a uh, younger brothers as well. And um, it was the day for sailing. My mother packed in both our suitcase a bottle of, a jar of uh, lemon pickle, which she had made from home. And um, we had that in the, uh, this thing and some clothes and the, we didn't know what to expect and I had some cash with me my father gave me some money as well and uh, we set sail on the first week of May I just um, everyone came to see us there was a chap from Karicho he'll he was staying with us as well. He came to bid us farewell. My youngest brother gave me a, a compass, like small compass-like thing, a keychain, which I still have it. I wonder if he remembers it. I uh, have forgotten it. It was a long time ago. Anyway, on on board the ship, there were the food was so horrible that uh, we had to use our uh, lemon pickle. Then uh, oh, one of those days before we reach Aden, or no, after reaching Aden, we were off to Djibouti, I think. The other way around, I oh, can't remember very well. From uh, when we reached Djibouti, these guys, they came down into our cabin and when we were eating this bread, French bread, dry bread. They were giving it with chocolate. No, but I don't think they have seen butter in their life. And this uh, Mauritian guys, uh, they spoke uh, the French Creole. And uh, they used to say this, the cook of this ship needs some chili in their eyes. Then they'll know what chili is and salt and butter. <laughs> the, 
the cook didn't know any any of those. They just gave us this long uh, bread, and uh, we both had one long bread each, and with ch chocolate to eat them. But we used to eat it with the lemon pickle, and this uh, the smell of lemon pickle must have reached the, the, um, the bunker three, and they came down and. They ate some of our lemon pickle, the Mauritian guys. Anyway, we didn't complain and we gave it to them as well. It became useful later on. And after, uh, I don't know how many days, we reached Port uh, Suez, where we, are, we have to cross the Suez Canal. Mind you, it was very fascinating crossing the Suez Canal. Minor details, let's say, both sides, it was only, uh, only the sh one ship can go at a time. And you can see the land on both sides. But at Port Suez, uh, some of the people go down. It cost 150 pounds or something for those days for each person to go and see the pyramid. We said, oh, we can't afford it. I said, we don't know what we are going to expect in UK, so let's not go for this port, this Cairo thingy, pyramids in Cairo, and they are supposed to meet us in Port uh, Port Said. We it took us I think more than an hour to. Uh, from Port Suez to Port Said, maybe two or three hours. And when we reached Port Said, some people, some more people came, and they were in the bunkers with us. Somalis in the bunkers. Uh, people from Aden in the bunker. Uh, so many people. Most of them sick, and uh, my brother was sick. Mainly all the, he was seasick. Sea sick. I'm used to it, so I didn't feel seasick. How can a ship's engineer become seasick? <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, it was rocking like mad. The ha when the ship rocks, the hammer goes. And uh, what can you expect when you're paying so little money? I think it was 575 shillings or something for the fourth class and the food what they gave us was I can imagine what the slaves felt like anyway when we reached uh, uh, Marcel we reached Marcel after so many days on 24th of May we reached Marcel and from Marcel we picked up a luggage one of the suit Suitcase handle had broken, and my poor brother carried it on his shoulders. He was only 16 years old. He was tougher than me that time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Anyway, he carried it. He had uh, learned to drive and passed his driving license in Mombasa, but he couldn't drive because his hand was broken playing football. And uh, he was in plaster and he had to have massage all his hand. It was very stiff and he became okay. Then by the time he, he could drive, we set sail. So tough luck, my brother. He couldn't drive at all from Mombasa. But uh, uh, after coming to England, okay, that's another story. Uh, we reached Marcel, from Marcel to Paris. From Paris, this fish and chips, man. Oh, it was delicious. And uh, we didn't have any money. So the Mauritians were very helpful that time. They bought us with the French money. They had French money. They bought us the fish and chip. And uh, we gulped it like nobody's business and drank some coke and it was so delicious. We hadn't had food for so many days. I can't imagine how many days, maybe 
15, 16 days. And I had lost a lot of weight after that. Then uh, we, after reaching uh, Paris, we, after the meal, we had to catch the train again to Dunkirk. And uh, we took the train to Dunkirk, from Dunkirk to Dover by ferry, ferry boat. I don't know how long that ferry boat took from Dunkirk to Dover. Uh, all the immigration took place in Dover, but we had no problem. We are British uh, citizens, protected citizen of Britain, uh, passports, and so we had no problem. But the Mauritians had some little problem, which they had to have some certificates and all, and they did have some. They also got off in the different trains and we from Dover the next story follows tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe for me and I'll see you tomorrow.